Bounty Hunter is the first role that I recommend any new player getting started with within Red Dead Online. The reason for this is because it is the one that provides the most action, as well as it also the one that can make your life the easiest with the amount of gold that it does pay out. And in today's video, I'm going to be giving you absolutely everything that you need to know. This truly is the ultimate guide and the only one that you'll ever need to know everything about the Bounty Hunter. people look at the roles within Red Dead Online, one that always comes to mind is the Bounty Hunter role. This role is probably the most popular within the game. One of the main reasons for this is it's the highest amount of combat involved with any of the content that Rockstar have pushed out. The majority of the Bounty Hunter missions involve riding over to locations, killing groups of enemies, capturing the bounty target dead or alive, and then taking that target back to the sheriff's office for a reward of cash, gold, and XP. Something interesting about the Bounty Hunter role is that it is the only role within the game that will reward you active gold for completing missions. Every role has its own daily challenges where gold can be earned by completing these challenges, the exact same with the Bounty Hunter. But a Bounty Hunter is the only one where you do complete missions and you will be rewarded with gold. You will not see that with any of the other content that we're going through in today's video. To start the Bounty Hunter, you'll need to head over to Rhodes where a cinematic will begin. It lasts for about three to four minutes where you'll talk to the legendary Bounty Hunter herself. At the end, you'll be offered a Bounty Hunter license which costs 15 gold bars. Later within the role, you will be able to unlock a prestigious Bounty Hunter license which costs an extra 15 gold on top. This is only once you've reached rank 20 within the Bounty Hunter. Once you get that, you're given the option to buy into the prestigious Bounty Hunter license which will give you an additional 10 extra rank unlocks and a bit extra content but for now we're just going to be talking about the standard license. Once you have the standard license you'll be able to play through standard bounty hunter missions. Just head over to the bounty board and there you'll see bounties lined up in posters and you'll also have access to legendary bounties. Sticking to the normal bounties within free roam from now there are three different tiers to this and this is signified with the dollar signs above on the poster. If there's a single dollar sign that means it's tier 1, if there's 2 it's tier 2 and if there's 3 it's tier 3. No matter the tier they can all be somewhat complicated. You can still get a 6 man bounty as a tier 1 just like you can get a single bounty as a tier 3. And there is some overlap between gameplay. The main difference though between tier 1, tier 2 and tier 3 is the payout at the end. Typically a tier 3 is going to be paying a lot more compared to a tier 1. But only if you take your time with the missions. Rockstar does this thing with all of their games. Where the longer it takes for you to complete a mission, the higher the reward you'll get at the end. So if you complete one of these tier 3s within mere minutes, you're probably just going to get a couple dollars. You may be lucky to get a couple gold nuggets and then you're probably going to get 100 maybe 200 xp really not rewarding but if you take 15 to 20 minutes to finish one of these missions you're going to see that your gold nuggets reach up to around 32 you're going to get a lot more than just a couple dollars and you're probably going to be reaching around six seven hundred plus xp the best thing for you to do is to enter into one of these missions complete the bounty mission by actually finding a target but not hand them into the sheriff's office instead Take your time, go around, loot bodies, do anything else just to count down that timer until it gets down to the last 30 seconds, which is when you'll turn that bounty in, dead or alive. And that way you'll always be able to receive the maximum amount of cash, gold and XP while still keeping things going as you're able to do other activities. There are also legendary bounties as part of the standard bounty hunter license. With this, there's 10 to choose from, each of them given their own unique story. These missions begin with a cutscene and the missions are more in depth taking place all around the world of Red Dead. Each legendary bounty has 5 separate difficulties and it increases after you complete the prior difficulty level. So at the beginning it's going to be very simple but as you keep on going through this and keep on completing it it's going to get harder and harder each time. To get the maximum reward for legendary bounties it's not just about waiting until the last 30 seconds because there is no timer but there is a timer in the background it's just not displayed on screen. If you wait 30 minutes in a mission during this time you can do whatever it is you want. You can even call in your hunting wagons where you can hunt animals and store them in the back. 
but once the 30 minutes is up, the background timer will stop and the payout will be capped out. That doesn't mean the mission is over, you can still stay in here, it's just no longer worth staying within this solo lobby. Instead, if you go and complete this legendary bounty, the mission will be successful and you'll get the maximum payout at the end, as long as you didn't die. This doesn't just stop there though. Once you get this role to max rank 20 as a standard bounty hunter license, you'll be given the option to buy into the prestigious bounty hunter license. This will cost you an extra 15 gold bars, but you will be able to unlock more content. Now value for money, it's not great, but if you're interested in the bounty hunter role, you'll get an additional three legendary bounties. And for every single bounty board within the game, there will be an infamous bounty which you can go through, which has multiple missions connected to it, but has more of a storyline. They're exactly the same as what you get with the normal bounties, this being tier one, tier two, and tier three, and has fairly similar gameplay mechanics, but can be broken down and you will need to keep on coming back till eventually you'll even have a cutscene. And in some cases, it takes you to a solo lobby just so you can finish that final mission. With these infamous bounties, you will be able to find them at the end and you will need to go through the different posters that are available. But depending on location will depend on the outcome. Each story is different based on location. And sometimes even though it will show a poster of four people, that doesn't mean that your first mission is gonna be you finding all four people. You might have one bounty for the first mission, one bounty for the second mission, and then two bounties for the third mission. It's all different based on location and they've all got their own unique stories. And just like what we saw with tier 1, tier 2, and tier 3, as it gradually increased with the payouts for money, gold, and XP, it's also the exact same with the infamous bounties. They tend to have a slightly higher payout compared to what you're able to go through with tier 1, tier 2, and tier 3. Whereas the three new legendary bounties, it's just a new storyline in which you can go through, each with their cutscenes, each based in a unique location, but they've got the exact same reward and payout system compared to the previous legendary bounties that were already there. In terms of the absolute best way to earn money, gold, and XP through the bounty hunter roll, there's no cooldowns with any of these tier threes, so you can just go bounty board to bounty board around the map, selecting these and completing them. That's not to say that legendary bounties have a bad payout, they don't. And I really do suggest playing through them because they are actually fun. They also do have a great payout, which is slightly better than what you get with tier threes. But the problem is that you need to spend 30 minutes in a solo lobby. And even though you can call in a hunting wagon and hunt animals and throw them in the back as well as you can also find some collectibles not all of them but some of them this can keep you occupied but that's about it that's all you really can do not to mention that with legendary bounties there is a cooldown once you complete one you'll need to wait until another legendary bounty is available again because there is a cooldown there's a timer ticking down so you're better off going into tier threes without having to go through into a solo lobby stay in a public lobby and continue to play and keep on going through this you'll be able to make a lot more money if you want to match this up by completing one legendary bounty maximizing the most amount of money gold and xp from that and then going into tier threes until that timer ticks down then this is certainly a strategy as you progress through all 30 levels of the bounty hunter role by having both the standard and prestigious license there will be a couple items that you should be looking into unlocking these are definitely worth purchasing naturally as you progress through this role there will be free skills that you can get access to which are pretty essential the second that you reach the rank to unlock them you don't need to do anything they're automatically added to your character these are skills such as being able to track enemies while sprinting or galloping on horseback receiving notification of bounties from a greater distance and enemies glowing in red when using eagle eye in terms of purchases there's a lot of clothing that's pretty expensive but not essential i highly recommend staying away from it unless you're already rich within game there are two items worth unlocking within the bounty hunter role that are essential one of these is the bounty hunter wagon this really becomes usable when you're trying to get a six man bounty with a fairly small posse if you're a solo player you're going to need this you're not going to be able to complete the six man bounties and those six man bounties especially if you can get them as tier threes will pay at a much higher rate if you can bring all of them back alive inside the back of that bounty hunting wagon and also you wait until the last 30 seconds it's certainly not worth purchasing this if you're a player that plays as part of a posse where there's more posse members than there are bounty targets for you to bring in 
Or if you're a solo player, that is only trying to get one or two bounties at a time because you can easily control that as a solo player. The other Ascension purchase is the Bolas. They are there within different variants and you don't need to go and buy into them because they're at a much higher rate. But if you just get the standard one, they're pretty nice to use. They will allow you to temporarily disarm your enemies from a distance. Whilst you have the time to take out any remaining enemies and then run over to Hogtie, your main target. The third purchase that I recommend, but it isn't classed as an essential buy-in. You don't need this for the role, nor do you need this for any role, but I do recommend looking into buying the roll horse. The Breton is up there with one of the best horses within the game. It's not going to be great from the very moment that you buy into it, but once you get it to level 4 bonding, and you also look to get the Nakadosha saddle with hooded stirrups, you're looking at something that's going to be solid all round. And I've always recommended if you're looking for the best horses within game, there's not just one. But really, if you go for any of the five roll horses that are there, which are the level 20s, don't go for anything less than level 20, only go for those at the highest possible rank, you will always have one of the best horses within the game. But it isn't essential for the role itself, it's just nice to have within Red Dead. So I always recommend going for that. With it, it's going to set you back $950, plus on top of that, you'll then need to buy into the Nakadosha Saddle and the Hooded Stirrups, as already said, which can really bring this up to around $1,300, $1,400. So only buy into it once you have the money. But I think if you're going to be a long-time player, this is definitely worth buying into. Now, with all of this, this is everything that you need to know about the Bounty Hunter role. This is the only guide that you're ever going to need. We've covered absolutely everything from initially starting, how much it's going to cost to buy into, the upgrades from the standard Bounty Hunter license to the prestigious Bounty Hunter license, all the rank unlocks that are worth going through, and also all the content and how you can maximize the most amount of money, gold, and XP. This is unlikely to change. Rockstar are unlikely to push any new content to Red Dead, especially to a scale where it is any major DLC. Their focus is GTA Online as well as GTA 6. So this will probably not change, making this the only guide that you'll ever need. But if there are any questions that you have, then please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. But anyway guys, I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. But for now, I'm going. So see ya.